Firstly, let's talk about how they earned their daily bread or their occupation. So, as you can see from this picture, their main occupation was agriculture. And thanks to the availability of water because of the Indus River, they had used different methods of irrigation, with the help of which they were able to grow crops like wheat, barley, gram, pea and maize. You'd be surprised to know that they were the first people who were able to grow cotton here in India. Apart from that, agriculture completely depended on the quality of the soil and their agricultural techniques and the use of tools. So they used tools like ploughs and sickles. They had also domesticated animals, like the one you can see here. You can see the use of ploughs and also that the farmer is making the ox or the cows work. So you can see that the Indus Valley people had also domesticated animals. But that is not all. They were also hunters. So they hunted animals like antelopes. And as you can see in the picture here, they also hunted elephants. Don't you think that's too difficult? But for food, they also fished. Now, there was another occupation which was pot making. And this was an important occupation because a lot of Harappan scripts have been found on these pots. Apart from that, these pots, these that you can see here, are made of a clay called terracotta clay, which means that they were burnt. After they were designed, they had to be burnt so that they stay in shape. These pots were often decorated. As you can see, these are decorated with the uh, pictures of an animal and these are terracotta clay. And they were usually, the most common type of decoration that was used was in a red clay. It was fine red slip, which was the most common design. Lastly, these were used for storing grains and food material and also for burial ceremonies. So with this, we understand that the Indus Valley people believed in life after death because once a person was buried, along with them, such pots were also buried, filled with food and water. Now, another occupation was making toys and sculptures. So they didn't just make pots with these clays, they also made such sculptures. As you can see here, you can notice that this looks like a bullock cart, right? This is an actual sculpture that has been found from the Indus Valley civilization. So with this picture, we can understand that these people had also domesticated animals for the purpose of traveling. So toys, animal figures and statues of made of terracotta have also been found in this civilization. Other than that, spinning and weaving was another major occupation, which was usually done by women at houses. So the discovery of clay spindles was also made here. Today, spindles are made out of wood, but spindles are basically tools that one requires for making clothes. So clay spindles were found here and were used by women in houses. So now that we are talking about clothes, you might be interested in knowing what these people wear, wore, right? So men covered themselves with one large piece of cloth, whereas the women, they wore skirts. And they were both very much interested in jewelry. And they both, men and women, uh, used to wear jewelries made out of gold, silver and agath, which was a type of special uh, mineral stone. And it was found there. So apart from that, you can take a look at this picture here, where a man is seen wearing a shawl. This shawl clad man's clothing depicts their true skills. Apart from that, what was really significant about this civilization was the fact that they were also metal casting and the metal casters used metals such as bronze, copper, gold and even silver. These metals were used into making tools and weapons. For example, a very famous statue from this age, which is this one right here, called the Dancing Girl statue, which is made out of bronze, which was found in Mohenjo-daro. This is a really famous statue from back then. Apart from that, metal tools have also been found. These, which you can see in the images, are in fact the real tools that have been found from that civilization. Now, as we've already seen, 
that the Indus Valley civilizations well planned cities. These cities had single storied or double storied houses, which were made out of such bricks. So, you'll understand that someone needs to make these houses, right? So, another important occupation was the building industry. The, this provided employment to large number of people and these bricks were made out of the mud that was taken out of the Indus River, right? And then these bricks were made and then the houses were built using such equal and uniform sized bricks. So, brick making was an important craft that was done by people during that civilization. Apart from that, the Indus Valley people are also famous for something else, which are seals. Because more than 2000 seals have been found from the sites in this civilization. So what are these seals? Well, these were, as you can see from the picture, either square or rectangular in shape, right? And were made of soft soapstones or steatites. Apart from that, take a look at this picture here. What does it show to you? Well, this shows that these seals had short inscriptions and impressions of many different animals, such as bulls, buffaloes, tigers, goats and elephants and many different animals. Even in this picture right here, you are able to see some sort of animal. And this animal appears to have a single horn, somewhat like a unicorn. These seals also had a hole in their back. See, this is a hole through which a thread could be passed so that these things or these seals could be worn as amulets or chains, right? Apart from that, even in this picture right here, you can see how a thread could be inserted and then worn by the people of that civilization. Apart from that, these seals were also used as stamps on official documents. So this is the seal and if you press it hard on a piece of clay, then such an impression would develop. And after this piece of clay would be dried, this would be preserved. And that is how today we know about these seals. So now let's talk about the religion that these people followed. Well, from several sculptures, we can understand that they were worshippers of nature and worshippers of mother goddess. This is a statue that has already been found from one of the sites in Harappa. This is another statue of mother goddess. Apart from that, later traits of Hinduism has also been found and we can see that they were also worshippers of Pashupati Shiva and sacred animals. Lastly, many seals have been found that show people in yogic postures. So we now know that people in this civilization were also doing yoga. Now, don't you think we are missing something out? How can such a big civilization work without trade? Trade was another important industry during this time and many people were involved in this. This was the most important source of income and a lot of inland trade was happening at that, that point of time and the merchants used uniform weights and measures such as this which have been found in various excavations. So spherical and cubical weights. These are the cubical weights that have been found and such spherical weights have also been found. So this leads us to understanding that these people were also conducting trade. But were they just conducting trade within their own civilization? We have sources pointing out to the fact that these people were also conducting trade in an overseas manner or with another other civilizations. How can we say that? Well, take a look at this picture here. What can you see? Well, this is a dockyard, right? This is where the ships would often come and stop uh, and a lot of goods would be loaded and unloaded here. So this dockyard is from a site of Lothal, which is currently in Gujarat. Apart from that, such seals have also been found. Take a look at this and this seal. What can you make out from this? Well, we can see that there is a ship drawn on them, right? So such seals have been found with the impressions of seafaring ship. So we can understand that the people in this civilization were also using ships for conducting trade. And who were they conducting these trade with? Well, with another civilization of that age, which was the Mesopotamian civilization. And this was the route that was used by these people. 
So, with that, can you answer the question? Many Indus Valley seals have been found in A. China, B. Mesopotamia, or C. Egypt. Well, the correct answer is Mesopotamia. So, how do we know that these people were conducting trade with the Mesopotamians? Well, this is because many different seals from the Indus Valley civilization have been found in Mesopotamia. And similarly, many Mesopotamian seals have also been found in the Indus Valley. This leads us to the fact that these two civilizations, which were there during the same time period, used to conduct trade with each other. So, have you heard about the term Meluha? Well, this term was used by the Mesopotamians to refer to the Indus region and have also been found in several different Mesopotamian seals. Now, let's take a look at the timeline of this great Indus Valley civilization. Well, we know that it began in 2500 BC and existed for around a millennium, which was 1000 years because it declined in 1500 BCE. Sadly, we don't really know a lot about this civilization. After the common era began, very recently in 1921 CE, the city of Harappa was discovered by Dayaram Sahani. So as you can see, it's just a hundred years ago. That is why we do not have a lot of information, a lot of knowledge about this civilization. In fact, we haven't even been able to decipher its script. The following year in 1922 CE, the city of Mohenjo-daro was discovered by R.D. Banerjee. So as we know that this civilization was a very good civilization, so why do you think such a civilization ever came to an end? Well, firstly, the civilization declined in 1500 BCE. And it has also been discovered that the city of Mohenjo-daro was rebuilt at least nine times at the same site. This is assumed, many archaeologists believe that it could be because of natural disasters such as constant floods and earthquakes. Because of this, people were no longer able to grow crops, but there was another reason. Many historians also believe that the Indus River might have changed its course due to which the climate of the area changed. So, in the same way that a river gives us life, it can also take it away. The climate of the area changes if the river is no longer present because you won't be able to find fertile soils next to it, right? So how will you grow crops? And if you can't grow crops, how will people live there, right? Because we all know that humans can't survive without food. So it is thought that after this, people migrated to different areas. And this is how this amazing civilization came to an end. Well, did you know that women used to wear shawls and short skirt held together by a girdle while men wore long unstitched garments and both of them loved ornaments? Well, they loved ornaments so much that they imported gold from present-day Karnataka. The names Harappa and Mohenjo-daro were actually given to the cities after they were discovered in the recent times. So we don't really know what exactly these people called their own cities because we haven't been able to understand this script yet. Apart from that, did you know that these were one of the first people who created their own drainage system with covered drains, which only came in Europe in 1400 CE. So this shows us exactly how advanced for their age these people really were. Apart from that, archaeologists have also found such skeletons with drillings in their teeth. Right? Can you take a look at these stones that are embedded on the teeth? Well, from these we can understand that there were also dentists 4,500 years ago. Isn't that truly amazing? So now that we have learned so much about this Indus Valley civilization, don't you think it will be fun to find out why the Mesopotamians refer to the Indus civilization with the term Meluha. Also, 
search about the shawl clad man statue which you can see here so with that we can understand how important the indus valley civilization people were in fact people are still discovering and learning more and more about these people unfortunately we haven't been able to figure out their script yet but as soon as we do that we will be able to learn even more about this amazing civilization that existed right here in our own indian subcontinent don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the delta step app and get easy access to more than 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now